Good morning, Manchester. Fantastic to see you all here today. I This is my third uh, Data Protection Practitioners Conference, and it's still overwhelming to me to look at the crowd in the audience today. And also, welcome to all of you who are joining us live stream. We are proud that the largest event of its kind happens here every year in Manchester. And as I quickly learned to moving to this wonderful part of the UK, there's a real sense of civic pride in Manchester. People are proud of the history of their city. People are proud of being independent and ambitious and proud that we continue to make an impact 200 miles north of the capital. I think those are things that the ICO can relate to. Some of you may have strolled here this morning from the tram stop. You may have strolled here this morning from Piccadilly Station. And you may have noticed one of the latest examples of civic pride. Over in St. Peter's Square, just a few minutes from where we are seated, is a statue of Emmeline Pankhurst, the, noticed, the noted suffragette. Emmeline was born in Manchester, and she, she founded the Women's Social and Political Union in 1903. Some and some of you here this morning may dispute some of her methods, but it's very difficult to walk past that statue and not be inspired by the impact that she had. Emmeline saw that the world was changing and she responded by having a positive impact. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning in my 15 minutes. I want to set out why I believe that we're entering a new stage in the implementation of the GDPR. And I want to talk about why that gives you, all of you here as data protection practitioners, an opportunity to make a positive impact. It seems incredible to me that GDPR is still not one year old. It seems like it's been around for a really long time, and yet it's still a toddler. But I think at this early stage of the implementation of the law, we find ourselves at a critical stage. For me, the crucial, crucial change in the law is around accountability. Accountability encapsulates everything that the GDPR is about. It enshrines in law an onus on companies and organizations to understand the risk that they are creating for others and to mitigate those risks. It formalizes the move of our profession away from a box ticking exercise or a micro focus on records of processing and instead sees data protection as something that is part of the cultural and business fabric of the organization. And it reflects that people increasingly demand to know how their data is being used and how it's being looked after. But I'll be honest, I don't see that change in practice yet. I don't see it in the breaches that are reported to the ICO. I don't see it in the investigations that we undertake, 
and I certainly don't see it in the results of our audits. And as you know, that's a problem because accountability is a legal requirement. It's not optional. But it is an opportunity because accountability allows you as data protection professionals to have a real impact on the cultural and business fabric, on the ethics of your organization, beyond bolt-on compliance work. And I can speak from experience here. Once upon a time, I was a data protection officer for a health authority in Alberta, Canada, at a time when a new law was coming into force. So I was in healthcare, and I remember we had so many audiences for our compliance work. We had so many stakeholders to deal with. Physicians and community nurses, administrators, volunteers, fundraisers. So don't worry. I understand that your first course of business is to ensure bottom line compliance across your organizations. But it was the work after that, it was the second phase, post-readiness, where the real opportunity to make a lasting impact. And by helping the organization to understand the need to completely reassess the relationship that it had with patients, with residents, with donors, with employees, we were able then to have a real and lasting impact. I know for a lot of people in this room and those of you who are watching online that some of this work, connecting the dots to make a real accountability program is underway. I had the privilege of reviewing the nominations for this year's DPO award, and what shone through for me was the creative, the dynamic, and overall the enthusiastic way that many of you are doing your jobs. Data protection professionals are legal experts, but you also have to be business analysts who understand how data protection fits with the vision of your organization and where it can be imperative, positive, and, transform and transformative. Data protection professionals who are coaches working to build a network of ambassadors within the business who understand what needs to be done. Professionals who are marketers finding creative ways to convince people to lift their head up beyond their day jobs and realize that they all need to buy in. It's quite a skill to be a data protection officer these days. But, this next phase of GDPR requires a refocus onto comprehensive data protection, and that means embedding sound data governance in all of your business processes. Accountability gives those of you who have the skill set, who have the passion, a chance to see a changing world as an opportunity to have a real and lasting impact. If you walk a little closer to Manchester Piccadilly Station, there's another statue to another noted Mancunian, John Noel Nichols, who was a wholesaler of spices and herbs and medicine at a time of change as the temperance movement 
gathered pace. So Nichols saw that the world was changing, and he considered this to be an opportunity. His response was creating the Vimto drink that is now sold around the world. We all need to have vision now. We need to see the changes in the world around us, and we need to use them as an opportunity to make a lasting impact. And what does that mean? That means doing things differently. It means taking a fresh look, a fresh perspective to challenges. And it's an area where we hope to lead by example at the ICO. We've taken the challenge of Brexit and we've responded with an international strategy that takes a fresh approach to our relationship with the world and how we need to influence the global data protection debate. We've taken the challenge of the pace of change in the digital economy and responded by finding innovative ways to make sure that we're engaged in the right conversations and that we have the expertise to contribute to them. We've grown our expertise at the ICO by recruiting from industry, by launching an AI fellowship, by developing a secondment program. We've also recently initiated a sandbox program which allows companies and public bodies to beta test their innovative ideas with data, a first in Europe. And there's an opportunity for those who are curious about the Sandbox initiative to visit our stand in the marketplace today. And the ICO has also responded to our growing demand for our services as a regulator. In our grants program, which you'll have a chance to learn more about today, we're helping others solve problems. And where we see problems ourselves, we're looking to act. And that brings us to this morning's papers, where I know many of you have read about the government's white paper covering online harms. And I know our minister, Margot James, will be speaking to you about the online harms paper shortly. I think the white paper proposals reflect people's growing mistrust of social media and unease about online services. People want these services, they want to participate online, they appreciate the value of them, but people are increasingly questioning how much control they have over what they see and how their information is used. That relationship requires repair. It requires increased content regulation, and, and that can help. If we get this right, if we get this right, we can protect people online while still embracing the opportunities of digital innovation. This is a tough task. The ICO has a role to play here, with personal data so integral to many of the aspects of these online services. It's another example of where we're actively looking to get involved, where there might be problems, not waiting to be asked to join in. So I hope that this dynamic approach comes across in our schedule today. There's over 100 people from the ICO involved in putting on this conference, and uh, a, a, a very large, big, appreciative thank you to Robert Parker and his team 
for their amazing efforts in putting this on. But we've worked really hard to pull this program together, and I hope by the end of the day, you'll go away feeling perhaps a renewed ability to have a, an impact, a lasting impact on your organizations. I want to close by quoting from a third figure recognized in a Manchester statue, one whose home is a lot closer to my home in Wilmslow. Alan Turing said, we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. And I think that's the right comment to start our day. There's plenty there that needs to be done. So let's get on with doing it. Thank you very much.